the report for the 23rd day of Vlogmas. There are finally bits of blue appearing and it's going to be warm again. So, there are some nicer skies in the west though, so hopefully it's going to be quite a pleasant day. Our cats are not outside cats, but I think they wish they were. <laughs> Good morning everybody, welcome to the 23rd day of Vlogmas. I can't believe we're here already. It's a pretty miserable looking day outside but it's still supposed to get to 30 degrees so we'll see how that goes. I probably won't notice because I'm going to be madly finishing potholders. <laughs> but before we go any further, of course, we know what time it is. It's Advent Calendar Girl time. Now today's pattern is one of the very first patterns I bought when I decided I was going to get back into sewing. I think it cost me maybe $2 at a market and I still love it to bits. There you go, it is an Australian home journal pattern and it's beautiful. What a perfect party dress. I actually think it's possibly meant to be maybe a debutante dress or something. It just has that sort of feel to it. But you can make it out of a beautiful satin or something. Something shiny or something glittery. The rest of the day is going to involve a lot of potholder sewing. I am onto the vice binding of the third one and it's probably the slowest part of the whole process but I'm getting there and I will show you how I'm putting them together because I have left one in its component pieces specifically so I can focus a bit of today's video on showing you how the potholders come together. And for the rest of my sewing tomorrow, hopefully even part of today, I have one more present to finish off and I won't show you that because it's for somebody who watches these videos. Hi mom! <laughs> but for my holiday sewing, I have decided to change up what I'm sewing next and this is, <laughs> believe it or not, this is my floral top. It's had the trim added and that's the rotary anglaise trim that I found on my second last visit to my parents old place and it's massive because it then becomes elasticated and all gathered in. But because there are some fiddly bits and some casing to do and elastic to insert, I thought the odds of getting it done by the time I have to go away are pretty slim so I'm going to switch my attention to the sparkly t-shirt because that is a really simple piece of sewing and I think I can get that done and that would be really versatile because I can pack some printed skirts of which I have many and that's that t-shirt should go perfectly with them. Hopefully my brother and sister-in-law are dropping in today because we probably won't be able to see each other on Christmas Day so we'll have a little bit of an early Christmas gift exchange so it means I have to finish off something on their present before I wrap it up in a tea towel mostly it's just going to be getting ready for Christmas today but I will keep you updated I'm definitely feeling Christmas spirit a bit more today I'm a bit more awake I went to bed at a reasonable hour and got plenty of sleep put up all my cards so it's looking even more festive I do have the lights on but you can't tell because of, you know, sunshine. And yeah, the cats are standing by as always to help me. And hopefully some bird visitors might drop in. Although so far, all I've seen is a water bird. And they always fly off as soon as I get the video. And also a bronze winged pigeon who also flies off as soon as anything happens. <laughs> I think they're pretty low down on the food chain. Yeah, that is planned for today. I hope you enjoy following me around. And I wanna say a special hello to Melissa, my fellow flute player, <laughs> who messaged me this morning to say she, she was missing watching her regular Vlogmas videos over breakfast. So here's one for your breakfast, Melissa. <laughs> well, I'm off to go do some boring stuff and I'll catch you up when I get to the exciting stuff. <laughs> there is one present all wrapped up in a tea towel. I didn't think the calendar would fit as well as everything else, but as you can see, it did. And I've just <laughs> reused the ribbon that was around the set of tea towels. Because reusing should come before recycling. But yeah, so now I just need my brother and sister-in-law to turn up, and then I can give it to them. <laughs> we are back with the pot holders. I have assembled here all of the things that you will need. Your two pieces of fabric, the cotton batting, and the insulation and they are all cut to roughly the same size. I also have a ruler, chalk, or a chalk pencil, and that cute little tin has some wonder clips in it. I tend to use chalk or tailor tacks rather than fabric marking pens because A, I'm a bit paranoid, and 
B, there's a reason this place is called So Old Fashioned. I like to do things a bit old fashioned. So I will now show you how I assemble the pot holder. The most important thing is to make sure you've got your fabrics up the same way. So I've just laid that down for the bottom. I don't think there's a particular order that these have to go in, but I'm putting the insulation layer in next, then the cotton layer, then the fabric layer. And you have a pot holder sandwich. Now you can see that there are bits of batting sticking out at odd angles and we will trim it. I wait till I've done all the quilting before I trim it but there's no particular reason you couldn't do it now if you felt you could. We will switch up the camera angle so I can show you how I do the wonder clips. But I do two on each side and I do them in a particular order which I found work best. So the first one I do is the top. So I pin two at the top though at this point I turn it over and I just open them up again and make sure the fabric is sitting okay in there because sometimes you won't quite grab the other layer properly or it'll get a bit sort of bunched up so I just check on the other side to make sure it's all working then, then I twist it around and repeat the process I can already feel that there's something weird going on there because it's pulled that up a bit so I turn it over and you can see it's really buckling there just lift up that clip and smooth everything out so that's not too bad you can keep tweaking it there is no law no limit on how many times you want to keep tweaking it it's absolutely fine twist it around repeat the process at this point you can just tweak all of them make sure the fabric is sitting pretty straight okay so I'm pretty happy with that now we need to mark the first two lines for quilting. At this point it's really handy to have one of these cutting mats because it has the, the 45 degree lines on it. So I can just place my square at a point. Uh, here's my chalk pencil. My mum gave me this chalk pencil. She got it in an op shop of course and it's really fabulous. If it's not 100% perfect, that's still okay. You're not going to go through any quality control process. All you're aiming for is something cute that will stop people's hands from getting burnt when they take stuff out of the oven or carry it to the table. And I chose this fabulous moustache fabric to demonstrate on because firstly it's covered in moustaches and secondly it shows up the white. So what I will do now is take this to the sewing machine and sew these first two lines. I don't do back tacking, I don't seal them because the edges will be sealed with the bias binding later. And then I will come back and show you what happens next. And now I have the beginnings of a pot holder. So I have my central cross and I've removed the clips because they're no longer necessary. What I'm going to do on this now is draw two more lines using this ruler as a measure so that's a two inches apart from each other. And you can do them as close or as far apart as you like, but this one just works really nicely. Just seems to be exactly right. So I have drawn up these four extra lines to sew. Then when I'm finished those, I'll come back and I'll draw the other lines. And I will show you how it's looking when that's finished. Well, I was going to show you where I was up to the pot holders, but there's something in the way. I'll see if I can get her out of the way. Now this is the pot holder with all of the roses quilting done. So now what I need to do is add some bias binding. To do that I first have to make some bias binding because I have run out. But I realised last night, and if you've been following my adventures for all of Blogmas, you remember how I said I completely stuffed up my first bias binding. The only problem was that the lines were drawn on the wrong way. So I drew them across not on the bias. But I've sewn it together the right way so I can just draw the lines on the bias so I don't have to waste those bits of fabric after all. So I will make that bias binding up and then I will show you how I attach the bias binding to make sure it all stays in the right place when you're done. Alright, we're at the very last stage of the pot holder, which I find takes the longest because it really is necessary to base the bias binding. I am using one inch wide bias binding, anything smaller just won't reach around the bulk of the pot holder. First of all I clip it around the edges with the clips 
and then I baste it so you can see that I have basted it in a very bright colour. I like to do a highly contrasting colour so it's easy to find the stitches to remove. It's important to do this because you can make sure you've caught each side as you go rather than sewing it around with your sewing machine and then realising you've missed a whole bunch. It's so easy for it to slip. Before you add the bias binding you'll find that bits of different layers have shifted so you might have bits sticking out one side. Just trim it so everything is nice and neat. Then add your bias binding, then baste, then add a cat. Um, thanks, Pickle. I think there are enough cats on that fabric already. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, um, once you've basted it, you just sew and make sure you sew inside your basting line and that way you know you're definitely getting both sides of the bias binding. Then I'll just turn the cats upside down. We have this little bit that I leave at the end, so I sew that in half and that covers up this starting bit here and then you hand sew that so it becomes a loop. Sew it in there and you have a loop and then your pot holder is done. So I will sew up these ones and show you the finished pot holders. There we go, two more done and only one left to finish off and that's the hanging from their little hooks. So yeah. That's uh, what I've been making for the last two days and I'm a bit over it now. <laughs> I would probably, I would easily make them again but I think it's nice to make them just as perhaps a pair rather than six at a time, especially if you've left it pretty late. Need to finish off the bias binding on one more and then I have another, another loop to sew and then the loop on the final one to do. And they're done! And then I just have my mum's present to do which will happen tomorrow morning. So it's all under control at this stage. <laughs> Look, somebody came back. Somebody stood on a branch outside the house and shrieked until I bought seed out. Isn't that true? Yes. <laughs> I always shoot the corn everywhere. toy for Christmas? I've had to go for extremely moody lighting in here at the moment because it's really quite dark. A storm has come over, it's raining, it's just like the start of Vlogmas in fact. <laughs> Today has been so productive and it really benefits you to go to bed at an all hour and get a good night's sleep because you feel so energetic the next day. For the rest of the night I'm going to finish off my pot holders and if I do have time, I might cut out some pieces for my mum's present so I can get a bit of a head start on it tomorrow. Tomorrow, as I'm sure you're aware, is Christmas Eve. So we'll be wrapping presents and preparing stuff for Christmas lunch the day after. And hopefully feeling really festive. I feel like playing Christmas carols in the house tomorrow. I think that would be a good thing. It's a bit rainy tonight, so I don't think I'll be going outside to do the, the sunset for well. We'll see how it goes. but. Just in case I don't, I will say it here. Thank you so much for following me around yet again. Thank you to everyone who has been here right from the beginning. I want to give a special mention to Anna because you started watching all of my Vlogmas videos just a day or so ago and you're powering through them so thank you so much. I hope you're not too sick of me by the end of it. But yes, the rain is really pouring down now so yeah, that's alright. I don't mind rain at night. I'm not planning to go out and do anything. In fact, I'm planning to stay in and do stuff. But yeah, that's pretty much it for today. Thank you again for hanging around with me and giving me some company while I sewed through endless potholders. And I hope you'll come back tomorrow for the second last day of Vlogmas. So until then, I'm going to say good night. <laughs>